good afternoon in our talk to expert program i am shailesh sharma technology manager i stem today we have with us mr prabhakaran pv from fluke technologies private limited and before Hi. i begin i would like yes prabhakaran you there good <clears throat> before i begin let me brief about i stem Indian Science Technology and Engineering Facilities Map (ISTEM) it's a national program of Government of India for shaping R&D infrastructure and supports academia and industry to achieve the goal Art Nirbhar Bharat. It holds the database of functioning R&D equipment and facilities from government or private funding, with options to researchers to check the availability and operational status of geographically dispersed facilities, and reserve the most suitable one online. and paper used through the portal digital catalog on istem portal is available with 700 plus technology and technology products as mandated by empower technology group to help academia and industry to decide the thrust areas and use the available indigenous technologies products to manufacture the required infrastructure for the society istem is striving to create the pool of skilled manpower and the job opportunities for them in scientific establishment ISTEM has got more than 22000 equipments registered at our portal with more than 1500 institutions 700 plus technologies and more than 15000 users today we have with us mr prabhakaran pv he is the head of product management at fluke technologies private limited Mr Prabhakaran is an electronic engineer having 25 years plus ex years of experience in the service industry in different capacities of managing maintenance tools and services business he is a trained thermographer and having more than 15 years of hands on experience in the field of quality power quality and energy management during his tenure with various reputed organizations he provided solutions to the energy products producers and consumers in these fields He has presented technical papers in various seminars organized by FICCI, CII, CPRI on power quality, energy management, and predictive maintenance related subjects. Fluke is not unknown to us. This corporation makes test and calibration tools for maintenance of electrical and mechanical assets in an, any industrial environment. Fluke's products are helping the industry to solve everyday maintenance issues to have a better productivity. and reduce safety related events fluke's calibration standards are some of the trusted standards for calibration and testing by metrologists across the globe so now over to you uh, mr prabhakaran i'm just giving you the say, sharing rights okay can you start yeah <clears throat> thanks a lot uh, dr sharma and uh, right. first of all uh, before i'm just sharing the screen uh first of all a big thanks for this initiative to the government of india and giving us an opportunity to you and the istem team okay this is, i am i feel that this is a privileged uh, audience for us because this is uh people who are going to change india's uh, future that's why i'm i'm very fortunate and privileged to be here okay give me a moment to share this uh, screen yes please I hope this is uh, visible to you. Yes, this is. Just make it fully screen and go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Prabhakaran, and this is this today's topic is basically to talk about the the power quality, how the power quality is changing uh, from the nineteen uh, sixties to now. okay and how it will be going forward i will be i'll not be giving a very in depth uh, things but i will be giving some kind of uh, uh, directions or the the indications how it is changing and what are those concerns we need to address going forward and uh, i'll also be uh, talking about certain uh, green technology segments because india is in the crossroads of uh, development and or the growth and we need to definitely expand our footprints in the green technology segments and the energy efficiency segments that's why we are in a in a 
uh, fast growth pace in those kind of acquiring those kind of uh, technologies. And uh, this is where we also may have to uh, meet those challenges, what we are going to see going forward. And I will be talking a bit about Fluke and its offerings. And then I'll be talking about the power quality as a subject. Uh, and then the power quality, how this power quality is impacting our life in whatever ways. And then the causes of power quality and how that is changing. And then what is the new technology? The, we are talking about the smart grid and then the EVs and other things. How this smart grid components are different now? And what is the difference of the old version of a grid and uh, the new smart grid? And what are those test requirements for this uh, smart grid as well as for the smart grid components? This is what uh, I'm going to talk. And uh, at the end of the session, I will be happy to hear from you on your feedbacks and your uh, questions and your own inputs in, in case if you have something which I, I, I need to learn, then that also will enrich me in this uh, uh, presentation uh, today, that is. When it comes to Fluke, Fluke is a 74 year old uh, uh, industrial brand. And this is started by a great individual called uh, John Fluke Sr. in 1948 at Connecticut, uh, USA. And he was the first, uh, he developed this product and the first product for his uh, previous employer, GE. And uh, he started this company in his basement with very less employees, that is a handful of employees. Today, we are uh, more than 3,000 employees with 20, uh, presence in 23 different countries and manufacturing facilities in almost every continent. That is uh, mainly in the US, Europe and uh, Asia. And this is what we, we have the footprint uh, across uh, the globe. And uh, Fluke is not a single brand and Fluke has uh, many sister brands like uh, in the same name, we have different business units like biomedical equipments, process instrumentation, and then the healthcare uh, uh, productions or the products, all those things, and even the Fluke networks, which actually helps people to even uh, test their uh, infrastructure on the IT. And there are, we, we actually enable the engineers and the scientists to get the best results from their testing requirements. When Mr. John Fluke Sr. started this company uh, 74 years back, he had one motto that is the user safety is what he considered as the first one. Because when people work in the electrical uh, electricity or electrical energy, uh, electrical energy has the power to kill the people. And that's why we, he ensured that whatever product goes out of Fluke should be one of the best and the most uh, safest product. That is how looks even today produce the best safest products for our customers then comes the fluke equipment is trustworthy when it comes to the fluke products we still uh, maintain that quality and then uh, trustworthiness that is people choose us to ensure that there is no error in their uh, measurements that is the kind of uh, a legacy we are still continuing and that is why people also knows us for ruggedness and reliability and accuracy for what we provide then the, the main motto what he uh, always uh, taught us and then he uh, we are still uh, holding it is the, the customer should always get more than what they paid for. That means it is not a box selling for us. It is giving a solution for the customer than giving a product. Okay, you, you may be paying something uh, X, Y, Z rupees or uh, dollar, but what you are gaining out of that product or the solution, it must be something worth more than what you are paying. In that 74 years of journey, Fluke has innovated uh, many different uh, products and solutions for the industry. 1948, we started. And in 1977, I'm not going through all those points or the uh, milestones. I'm just picking a few of them and then highlighting for your benefit. In 1977, we launched uh, our first handheld multimeter. Till such time, multimeters were there, but it was all benchtop. And this 8020 of Fluke became the world's first handheld uh, multimeter. Okay. And similarly, in 20, 2005, we launched our first thermal images. Thermal images were there for uh, much before that. Until 2005, this thermal imaging 
uh, solutions were available for the elite class or some of the high priced uh, uh, solutions only were available. When we launched this thermal imager at one third of then cost and th th this became an instant hit and uh, today we command uh, close to 30, 35 percentage of the uh, thermal imaging market for uh, maintenance applications or the uh, condition monitoring or the maintenance kind of applications. In 2013, when everyone was started talking about the, the initial days of the Industry 4.0 revolution, Flucas launched its first connected multimeter or connected device. Okay, But it was too early for industry to even understand what exactly we are talking. And today we have the largest uh, test instrument portfolio which can connect to each other or connect to cloud or connect to any of the other instruments. That means this was the first fluke, Flux was the first product which were ready for the industry 4.0 revolution. And in 2016, we launched another interesting product which was a power analyzer which can measure the rotating machines like a motor's efficiency without mechanical sensors. A running motor's efficiency, finding a running motor, motor's efficiency without mechanical sensors is impossible till 2016. And we changed that understanding and we have launched a product which is which was helping everyone to quickly analyze what is the, because the motors and drives were the 65% of the, the loads constituted in any large industries. And that's where this product was giving a instant help to the engineers to find out what is the kind of efficiency their plants are running. And similarly in 2019, we have launched our first acoustic imager. This is uh, redefining the way people uh, see the air leaks or the partial discharge. Okay, this is a revolutionary uh, product what we have launched and there are uh, many takers for this in various uh, segments, including the new technology era, in, including the wind uh, sector or even the Battery manufacturers are uh, counting on this product for testing their products. And in 2021, we launched our clamp on current meters, which can measure voltage and current without the use of test leads. Just using the clamps, you will be able to get both voltage and current. These are a few of our uh, successes or the milestones. And when it comes to the, the safety, we are not talking just on the air because the safety is very important for electrical engineering or electrical systems. And if you look at this uh, picture here, you can see the uh, entire industrial facility or any facility where you are getting the electricity from the pole and then it is coming to your uh, uh, substation or your uh, panel room. And then you have the uh, shop floor. Then you have your offices and other uh, facilities. Here, the availability of or the possibility of you getting higher voltage levels or the transient levels is high. And based on this, IEC uh, has classified the requirement of test equipments uh, for each of the categories. Category four is rated or expected high voltage level at category four levels or the areas are up to 8 kV uh, transients. And then in category one, it can be uh, up to 2 kV. And the operating voltage here can be up to 230 volt or 250 volt. But here the operating voltage can be much higher, like 1000 volt even and above. Okay. When it comes to the uh, this thing, every product of Fluke is designed according to IEC recommendations and then tested by at least three independent agencies for meeting those recommendations. Okay. And similarly, the portability. We make our products which is much portable so that the people can take it and then uh, work around very easily. Ruggedness, because when you are using this in the maintenance or the rugged environment, you need a rugged product. You can't uh, remove this product every now and then. That's why even we offer some of our product with uh, lifetime warranty. And many others, other manufacturers still shying away from that kind of uh, uh, warranty terms. Then accuracy, many people, when in doubt, they look for a fluke a product and then verify their measurements. And safety, as I said, Safety is a, a paramount uh, concern for us, and we don't uh, allow our customers to get into tragic ends. Ease of use, any fluke product we design with a uh, primary intention that if you are able to use the instrument with, with less training and less time, then your productivity can go up, okay? And 
meeting all the required standards is also is a habit for Flock. When it comes to the test and measurement landscape, we are there in the entire pyramid, the accuracy pyramid. You can see this, uh, this representation of accuracy pyramid, this topmost accuracy, and then the uh, bottom line accuracy is that the minimum accuracy requirement for a day-to-day -day, uh, maintenance kind of job or the electrician's job. But here you are talking about uh, a laboratory like NPL or uh, ERT, uh, ERTL or ETDC kind of laboratories where we have the standards or the calibration equipments which will give you the high-end standards for verifying any of these parameters like electronic parameters or electrical parameters like voltage, current, frequency and all. Similarly, physical parameters like temperature, pressure, flow and mechanical parameters, all those things. That means we make the standards to test the test equipments itself. And similarly, when it comes to the day-to-day -day testing and measurement use, we have the complete handle, uh, handheld tools for various purposes, whether it is voltage, current, uh, leaks, or vibration, or thermal uh, conditions, all those things we have for uh, the, our customers. That means we cover the entire spectrum of uh, test and measurement better than many others or any others. When it comes to the product, uh, what we have, as we uh, started with the voltage, current, and uh, power measurement, the multimeters are the portfolio. We have the highest one. Which we have different kind of multimeters, from the average sensing multimeter to the uh, RMS multimeter to a specialized multimeter to the highest accuracy, accuracy um, multimeters. Because in the world's, world's highest accurate DMM is Fluke's uh, 8085, which is a 3 ppm accuracy DMM. Okay, that comes with its own uh, cost and the uh, benefits. And similarly, the clam meters. When you want to do the measurement of high currents, then you need to go for a clamp on current meter. We have a range of current meters which can help you quickly analyze those kind of uh, uh, measurements in the field. And then another interesting product what we have is the installation test or the safety test, what we call. Here, this product is a very uh, fast moving product in US, Europe and Australia because there they uh, are much concerned about the user safety or the, the facility safety. But in India, it is it has lesser takers, but yes, there are the sales is improving over a period of time. And this can actually help you to analyze or verify the safety uh, protection devices like ELCBs. How do you test it? If you really want to do the ELCB testing then or the RCD testing, you need to inject that fault current and then find out whether it is tripping or not within that prescribed time. And this equipment is capable of doing it before your facility is getting charged, you will be able to ensure that your safety protection devices are working or not. And similarly, digital thermometers, contact type and non-contact type we have. And another interesting product is the earth testers. In, for electrical engineers, earth, earth is very, very uh, important component. And if your earthing is not proper, none of these electrical systems can work perfectly. That's why earthing, designing of earthing, testing of earthing is very critical for you, you to uh, ensure that you are, your electrical systems is, are functioning properly and giving the best results. Then we also have some tiny product line called uh, indoor air quality tools. When you really want to test the air quality where you are living in, then these air quality testers will be really useful, especially in the HVAC kind of maintenance or the testing applications, these tools will be of highly use. Then comes the power quality analyzers. We have a entire portfolio of power quality analyzers to help you to do the analysis, do analysis of power quality as per the latest standards and do energy efficiency study and load studies kind of uh, work. And then comes the battery analyzers. Battery analyzers is going to be a kind of uh, a good product for uh, today's world and the tomorrow's world because battery is going to be the uh, the not only the critical power, it is going to be the uh, essential power for everyone. That means you need to test the batteries for its condition for uh, every now and then to ensure that there is the, the critical power or the essential power is not uh, stopped in between without your knowledge. And to do that, we have designed this product. You can, without taking out the batteries out of service, Online, you will be able to test all these things and then get the required data. And similarly, we have an oscilloscope. 
majority of you would have used oscilloscopes, but we have a oscilloscope which is completely isolated and battery operated so that it can be used in any uh, kind of applications very safely. Okay, and it can be directly used for a thousand ampere, a thousand volt applications uh, without an additional uh, arrangement like a isolation transformer or anything. And similarly, we have field calibrators. When it comes to an industrial uh, production environment or a process plant, you will be using a lot of tiny sensors like uh, uh, temperature sensors, pressure sensors, and all. And how do you verify those sensors are functioning properly? Then you need this kind of field calibrators to verify whether sensors are working or the readouts are working. And these sensors and readouts are actually verify or controlling the output quality and quantity. And that is where it is very, very important for, to, for you to use it. It's not only for the process industries, even for your laboratories or any of those uh, uh, work what you are doing. The sensing technology is important and the verifying the sensors are very important. Then comes the vibration uh, testers. We have vibration testers for laymen. Okay, vibration is actually a mechanical engineer's uh, uh, area, but many a time vibration testing affects the electrical engineers. And that is why we have designed this product to ensure that anyone will be able to operate and then verify the vibration condition of a rotating machine using this simple to use machinery. And we have this, uh, we launched around 10 or 15 years before, and this product has artificial intelligence built into it. That means almost 30,000 uh, synthetic signature waveforms of vibration signatures of uh, different motors are built into it. And that's why when you are taking the measurements, it compares with those uh, kind of uh, product and then verify and give you the condition of the uh, machine under test. And similarly, we can also give a laser alignment tool to ensure that when, when you are having vibration, whether it is coming from the uh, alignment issues, then you can also do the alignment through this laser alignment tools. Then comes the thermal images. As I said, in 2005, when we launched this thermal images, we had a, only a few of the models. Today, we have around uh, a dozen different models, ranging from a uh, very basic level or costing some 50,000 rupees to ranging something around uh, 25 or uh, 45, la uh, 45 lakhs kind of uh, price range. For every application, we can give you thermal images today. And similarly, Video scopes, this can help you to at least see wherever you can't reach. Okay, this is a kind of endoscopy device for electrical or the mechanical kind of applications. You will be able to do those uh, kind of job. And another interesting product, what I said, is the acoustic or the sonic images, which can help you to identify any kind of leaks, whether it is air leaks or the gas leaks or even partial discharge in high voltage uh, systems. If you really want to identify, it is very, very difficult and then uh, fix it uh, earlier, but this instrument with multiple sensors built into it with a visual camera, it is able to find these kind of leaks and partial discharge very quickly uh, with a much easier way at a distance. You will be able to do it. And then comes the underground pipe and cable test tracers, which will help you to whenever you are doing a kind of uh, renovation or a kind of excavation for any of the expansion kind of projects, you may have to find out what is there lying beneath your uh, uh, ground. And uh, if you are not, if you are just touching a live wire or a kind of uh, uh, pipeline, which is carrying some of those uh, critical uh, material or water, then it can damage your system or it can stop your facility or it can actually give safety hazards. And to avoid that, this product can help you in big way. Now, uh, the another product, what I have said is product range I have told is the calibration equipments. This is anyway, the electrical calibration, RF calibration, even in RF radio frequency range, we have the single box solution for radio frequency calibration equipment. That is highest accurate, accurate radio frequency sources are available from us. And then comes the uh, gas flow calibration, then a array of uh, data acquisition system, specifically for the temperature kind of application where the accuracy is actually a big concern. We have those kind of solutions. Then comes the pressure calibration. When you want to calibrate any pressure gauges or pressure related sensors, we have these pressure gauges or pressure calibrators, which can source the pressure parameters at very, very high accuracy levels. And then the humidity, 
when you really want to check humidity sensors or humidity systems, you have this product which can help you to uh, source the humidity conditions, what you want. And temperature calibration, if you really want to uh, calibrate a RTD or a uh, thermocouple or those kind of readouts and then data loggers, then you may have to have uh, temperature sources, very precise sources. We have those kind of sources for every use. And Fluke India also has the facility to integrate any of these test requirements, uh, specifically custom uh, customize your test benches for your requirement, or it can be for testing or it can be for uh, calibration. We can create a custom test benches for to meet your application. And this capability is exclusively available for Fluke India. Now we will come to the, the topic of today, that is the power quality and the uh, green tech solutions. What is power quality? Power quality is, we all know that okay, availability of power itself is many times a challenge, especially in the monsoon season but uh, and the summer season. But the quality is more important because nowadays products are all very, very critical and very sensitive. And what is this power quality? The definition is like any power problem manifested in voltage, current, or frequency that can result in failure or missed operation of the utility or the equipment, the end user's equipment is what is called power quality. That means the power is intended to support the end user's uh, equipments. And if the power coming to your facility is not allowing the machine to work, then there is a power quality issue. If your equipments or your system are actually feeding something bad into the utility, then that also is actually a critical issue. Why, why this is happening today? In 1960s, I don't know uh, how many of uh, you are of that age, age group uh, with white, more white hair than me, then you would have seen that together, the loads are all uh, either capacitive or inductive or resistive loads in 1960s or before. And those days, there were no power quality issues. It used to be all sinusoidal waves, both voltage and current. Only a phase shift used to be there. And uh, major uh, machineries or the loads were like motors, heating, heaters, and bulbs kind of uh, things. Okay. And today, or after 60s, we have introduced power electronics into the electrical engineering. And there, you started seeing the distortion in the waveforms. That was the introduction of power quality or the harmonics into the systems and today again this uh, disturbance are disturbance creators or the power quality or creators are increasing and the system vulnerable vulnerability is increasing that is why you can see the power quality parameters are increasing and power quality uh, issues are improving okay issues are improving not the power quality is improving and we are also struggling to improve the power quality per se the equipment has become more sensitive. Earlier days, the uh, digital ICs and other things used to work at 5 volt. And today it is uh, working at a fraction of those voltages. That means it's more sensitive to the variations. Cost cutting within the deregulated energy mat, uh, markets or cost cutting in any places. That is, it is also creating a kind of competition and kind of uh, uh, requirement for everyone, even the energy producers to improve the quality of the energy. These are all the uh, reasons for we are seeing the power quality issues. And when it comes to the production, it's a kind of uh, flow of uh, water or whatever you, you see, that is uh, the energy is getting produced in one location. That is, you can see the uh, power plants here, and then it is getting transmitted through the transmission lines, and then it is getting distributed to the uh, end customers through the distribution lines. This is a long uh, journey or a long uh, way of uh, production to end users. And anything can happen between this because you may find you may be a user of uh, a very clean uh, linear loads, but in this journey, the electricity can change its uh, face or its, its characters. Okay. Because usually with the traditional uh, generation mechanism, here you are going to get a very pure sine wave okay because this all most almost it is uh, using the linear mechanism okay and here when in the in on the go you are going to get polluted it is just like a river starting from the mountain 
when it is uh, starting from the mountain, it is actually clear, pristine water. And when it runs through the cities and towns and then villages, by the time you, re you get the water, it is completely polluted and unusable. That is the way the electricity also reaching you nowadays. And what are those power quality parameters? There are, it is not only harmonics, there are many other parameters you will find today's uh, in today's power quality terminology. It can be transients, okay, any momentary uh, voltage uh, improve, increase happening in subcycle variations or dips and swells. That is, you, okay, you can also see uh, multiple cycles, you will find a kind of momentary uh, voltage low or voltage high. And this also can create a lot of problem into the uh, systems what connected to it. Then comes the harmonics. Harmonics is one of the most talked about uh, power quality issue in the last uh, two or three decades. Uh, I think it is more than three decades. Yeah. Uh, and then comes the unbalancing issues. Unbalance can come because of your load or it can come from the incoming itself. And another issue which I have put here is the interest. Interest is mainly not a power quality issue, but the load related issue. When you have the inductive loads where it can actually create a kind of high torque kind of situation for the electrical applications. And this interest can actually create a kind of sag or swell in your system. And when it comes to power quality, what happens or what causes it and what is the kind of symptom you will get in your systems? Okay, dips and swells, you may find a momentary uh, dimming of light or a kind of reboot of a uh, computer or a systems or uh, unexplained alarms for in your uh, factories and other things. This can a, be a simple symptom of the dips or swells present in your facilities. How it comes? It can be because of the large loads uh, getting on or uh, uh, missing some operations or somebody neighbor, some of your neighbor is operating a kind of uh, large machinery. This are all can create the kind of dips and swells. And severe weather conditions like uh, rainy or uh, windy seasons, you will get this kind of dips and swells. And uh, failed power supplies, again, swells you will have this uh, uh, failed power supplies, over voltage shutdowns and other things for uh, VFTs. You will get, uh, when you have the swells, it is a kind of momentary high voltage and SACs, you are getting uh, the lower voltage. Okay, but the phenomena will be almost similar but the uh, symptoms can be different. Transients, the transient will be something like a momentary, that is in, in nanoseconds or millisecond range, you will get a kind of momentary, very high voltage present in your uh, low voltage lines. And this can uh, create a kind of uh, flashovers or a kind of damage to the insulation or kind of uh, uh, completely the electronic equipment or the computers stopping the work, okay? and uh, locking up systems and all. And here you also need to read this along with the insulation properties. When you have the insulation uh, uh, combined with the conductors in your facilities, over a period of time, the insulation will deteriorate. And is, when this transient comes there, it will be a kind of, it can puncture the uh, insulation property of the material used. And it can also cause a lot of uh, uh, accidents in terms of the uh, arcing or in terms of the fire accidents in facilities. Lightning strikes, switching of capacitors, re systems after power failure, that is especially the capacitors when you, uh, when the power goes off, the capacitor may be in the full charge and then when it comes back, it will add up the, uh, with the uh, incoming power and you may get a kind of uh, pulsating or the, the tran oscillatory transients in that kind of conditions. I am actually uh, going much faster because these are all individually itself is big topics. And uh, in case if you have any uh, more clarification from me, then you can just uh, put it in the chat box or ask in the end of the uh, presentation. Then comes the interruptions. Definitely in India, we are still facing the interruptions as the one of the quality issue because the traditional grid or traditional manufacturing of uh, generation of uh, power and the distribution mainly focused on the availability and here the interruption itself is considered as a kind of a, a big power quality issue. Then comes the unbalance, overheated uh, 
uh, motors and then the rotating equipments are a kind of symptoms of unbalance not only the unbalance even the harmonics can overheat your motors okay that is coming in the next and unbalanced load is basically uh, because of the uneven distribution in your facilities most of your uh, facilities especially like a college or a hospital or a uh, commercial building where your loads will be mainly single phase and if you are not distributing it properly for a three phase uh, transformer then you will find this kind of unbalance and that unbalance will also cause additional problem for uh, the equipments connected then comes the harmonics the most talked about power quality issues uh, overheated uh, neutral conductors overheated transformers then uh, some uh, overheated inductive loads or even bulge uh, capacitors all these things can happen uh, because of the presence of harmonics and today even harmonics is getting into multiple variants like uh, inner harmonics and there is a term I, I hope most of you would have started hearing a term called uh, supra harmonics okay that is again uh, very very relevant going forward i will also touch upon that in the coming slides and what happens when when the the actual cause of the uh, harmonics especially the nonlinear loads anything uh, from your uh, fan regulators to the vfts and then power electronics drives and all of those uh, things are actually uh, the nonlinear loads and this nonlinear loads are actual creators of the harmonics okay even the building machines arc furnaces many many things even your computer or your laptop which is using a uh, smps which is predominantly a kind of uh, uh, harmonic generator and what happens what is the uh, result of those things you will find all kind of uh, losses quality loss uh, poor environment then you will have less uh, productivity if you have a power quality issue and then uptime in case if you have uh, problems in the uh, power quality power quality is not good then all these things can be a challenge for you to achieve better quality achievement better productivity achievement better uptime all these things are very very difficult to achieve and it can sometimes cause a uh, harmful effect to the environment also we will look into that uh, more seriously or more uh, detailed here loss of production let us see that if there is a kind of uh, I, I can uh, give you an example where uh, something around uh, 18 years before when i went to one of the largest uh, textile mills or where uh, they used to make uh, denim and the equipment what they have connected my equipment was connected to the input of a large machine the machine's input was the uh, yarn and then some uh, color and dyes and the end of the output the output of the product was uh, like denim denim cloth okay and it was a continuous process and they never used to stop this uh, thing and they used to they have installed a 250 kilowatt or kva ups exclusively for that process and that uh, machine when i asked them why you are uh, spending too much uh, money into this ups for a specific machine they told that if the power goes for even uh, half a second or a ha half a minute or even one minute my loss is more than uh, 10 lakhs because 10 lakhs in money and then uh, another one hour he need to completely clear this machine from that die and uh, cleaning up the machines and then reloading it that means the 10 lakhs plus additional uh, cost of all this uh, material and manpower is huge amount of loss and production time is wasted and production is completely stopped and then damaged product in that process it may also get damaged i have seen some of the places where in a, in a hospital in a uh, in the diagnostic lab where the power quality because of power quality their uh, blood samples or blood uh, uh, counting results were getting affected okay when we had to really uh, dig deep inside their uh, power quality conditions and then we had to tell them that okay you have to install certain uh, input uh, conditioners or the power quality conditioners here to ensure that you are not getting this kind of misleading uh, lab and the doctor who was uh, in charge for the lab was uh, highly panicked by seeing the kind of result what he's he was getting in his lab then the energy cost even power quality parameters itself will be able to increase your uh, energy demand 
especially when it comes to the harmonics when you have the if it is uh, linear loads you have only voltage current and power factor and your power triangle is a two dimensional uh, diagram the moment you are introducing the harmonics it became a three dimensional diagram that is you are also introducing the kvarh that is harmonic uh, uh, kva harmonic consumption okay that actually pushes your uh, complete power requirement from your utility that means if you have power quality in your system bad power quality in your system you will be ending up paying more and similarly maintenance when you have this kind of power quality issues playing in your facilities you may have to do more maintenance or you may find more premature failures in your facilities that means more maintenance means cost you need more manpower you also need more money to even serve those kind of things or you may find more stoppages in your facilities and environmental conditions in some cases loss of power can cause environmental damages especially when you have some kind of uh, the what you call uh, uh effluent treatment uh, plants which is all controlled by electricity or uh, controlled by uh, electronic mechanisms and if this power quality parameters can change the behavior or stop those conditions you also will be uh, impacting the environment then the market impact if you are a big brand you need to ensure that your quality is not going bad or your commitments are meeting and this power quality can actually go against your market uh, conditions or market standings that's why majority of the large uh, brands prefer a better power quality and then you can also see wherever they find better power availability and quality they will be setting up their plants also but what is changing now see this is what i was talking all this while was basically a traditional uh, power system where the single manufacturing and then it is transported via these traditional networks but what is today happening is distributed manufacturing or distributed generation of power you have all kind of uh, uh, generation whether it is uh, nuclear or thermal or you also have uh, solar or wind or any kind of things and even there is a uh, set of customers who are actually a co-producer for your energy that is many of your households or industries are producing energy using it for their use and then again pumping it back to the grid this is what actually the the term called smart grids where you have the number of it's a kind of uh, a more complex uh, system because if you if you look at the traditional uh, grid it is just like a uh, highway okay but here if you are looking this it is more complex system where you have all kind of transportation is happening in in a uh, limited area and here you may have to handle with multiple aspects of uh, delivery generation and the uh, the reliability part of the equipments okay and more importantly earlier generation or the traditional generation it was more predominantly a traditional generation and with a very high capacity but now most of this generation like uh, solar or wind which is small in capacity its uh, capacity to withstand or handle some of the uh, short circuit or other things will be much lower and that's why that itself is holding a kind of threat to the entire uh, system or the entire grid that's why the uh, components are becoming weak and the structure become very complex and here this is what actually i would say that the the challenges what we are going to see but the uh, the definition of power quality again it is it remains same right and i have taken the the generic uh, term in the previous one now i am i have taken the explanation or the definition given by the iec according to iec electrical power quality is a compatibility problem between the source and the load not perfection of sources okay that means here they are very stressing the relationship between the generation and the loading okay it is how uh, effectively you can merge or the uh, interconnect these two things without affecting these two components okay it can be its electromagnetic compatibility uh, or the the ability to 
uh, of the equipment or system to function satisfactorily in its electromagnetic environment. That is, when you, you have two or three different systems are coexisting, it can interfere each other. And how strong these uh, systems to handle those kind of interference, that also creates uh, the support system for this. And why this is very, this definition is very important today is you can find going forward the grid connected uh, uh, EVs. Okay, there you are incorporating many things into the grid. Okay, and these small systems needs to be good enough to support whatever EMC or EMI interference, what you are going to get from the system or what its own creation. It should support each other. And when it comes to this, uh, as I said, there is a new term also is uh, used today. That is prosumers. That is the customers. Customers are actually becoming the prosumers. That is product, uh, the producer come user. That is what is the prosumers. And this uh, is basically the small uh, generation houses which uses their power and then export it to the utility. Then you have the traditional utility. And then the grid itself, which is a combination of everything that is the customers, the utility providers and the service providers and the service providers is again in India itself. You will find uh, in cities like Delhi or uh, uh, some other uh, states, you will find there are multiple service providers. Even in Orissa, you will find uh, multiple service providers. The private players are playing as a service provider. They are getting the power and distributing to their customers. That's why there is a kind of competition in, in inside the distribution or the transmission itself is going to come. And this also is actually increasing the challenges of the systems and the, the overall system become more vulnerable than before. And more importantly, in the smart grid uh, systems, the components, the, the power electronics components are much, much higher. Earlier days, even the generation portion used to be less power electronics dominated and loadings were more power electronics uh, dominated. But today you have solar or wind uh, or any of those kind of new generation generation there. The components what you are using are all power electronic based. And that means the power generation itself is uh, having a component of uh, power quality in it. And to explain more. What is the uh, the difference between these two? I have just summarized a few of the things. There are there can be many more. That is, what is the difference between the conventional uh, grid and smart grid? You can see the architecture itself, the hierarchical and vertical architecture for the uh, traditional grids, and then the okay. Uh, in the smart grid system, it is unbundled and distributed so that you have multiple generation and you can also isolate it if you want. That is the kind of uh, mechanism you have. Similarly, consumer participation in the traditional way, you don't have any any say in the the power what you are using. You are only depend on the it's a one way kind of uh, traffic. You don't have any control. And similarly, you also have uh, the generation storage. In generation storage, earlier version, there is no storage. The new version, there is a storage option is available. It's a kind of plug and play with uh, distributed storage also. Similarly, power quality. Earlier, there is no power quality. It is only availability was the priority. Today, the uh, asset management or power quality is becoming a kind of uh, priority, and you will get the better uh, power quality now. Asset op optimization. Yes, you also have optimizing uh, the assets and the machinery is what you are using in the system and similarly self healing mechanisms you have the uh, smart grids are capable of doing self healing but earlier it was different and i think there is a question can you just read out because i just saw it popping up maybe if there is a question where i can answer here i can do other yeah, let me yeah Actually, gentlemen, we take questions in the end, so you can yeah, continue good. and we'll take them in the end. That, that will be good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 And then comes the cyber attacks. The existing, the old type of uh, uh, grids are actually very prone to the uh, cyber attacks. But now we have more resilient uh, smart grids, which is very capable of handling it and then isolating it very quickly. 
disaster management also we can isolate these systems using the distributed uh, uh, nature of the system and event analysis the smart grid is completely on the artificial intelligence and then continuous monitoring kind of system so that you have better analysis better control of what is happening there and again the communication is basically two way in smart grid okay that is why every system communicates to both the ways and then ensures that there is if there is some uh, problem then it isolates itself intelligence definitely when you have better uh, communication better uh, analysis or better better monitoring you also have the intelligence uh, good enough to control and avoid tragedy uh, quality issues and then quantity issues similarly efficiency now people talk, uh, we talk more about the uh, efficiency earlier it used to be efficiency used to be a byproduct okay but nowadays we talk about the efficiency in big way let us see what is this components and how these components are actually creating more uh, challenges to the uh, smart grids or the usage when it comes to a solar system you can see the solar is uh, getting energy from the sun and then it is converted into a dc lines and then there is a kind of uh, combiner boxes and then it is getting converted that this is actually dc to ac kind of converter and this is again monitored at all the levels and then comes the ac control uh, collector panel and then distribution boards you can see these systems are actually not large enough system in many places okay large uh, solar power plants also are available but still if you compare its capacity with a traditional uh, generation plant that is a, a thermal plant or a, a nuclear plant it is in uh, mini schools okay that way you will find that the capacity itself is small and you may have to have different kind of measurements here the output can be varying depending on the solar radi radiance and the kind of uh, wind what is flowing or whether there is a cloud is happening all those things actually determine the output of uh, the solar panels and similarly you are introducing the power electronic component of as inverter here and this inverter quality is very very important if the quality and the uh, reliability of this inverter is at stake then the end air output and even the reliability of the system is at stake okay because it is just like a, a chain's integrity or chain's uh, strength is uh, depending on the weakest uh, link of it. And anything can be a weakest link in this. And that's why you need to test every stages uh, during the design, production, and manufacturing and installation. You need to do different testing. And the testing can be anything like solar irradi irradiance, uh, module configurations, VOC and IAC kind of things for the panels as well as for the inverters and mpp tracking what is the maximum power the uh, the panels can deliver at what point of uh, time and earth bondings that is everywhere the earthing also is important okay whether there is a proper earthing to ensure that there is a earthing integrity is maintained and many other things and battery health because battery also plays a major role in this kind of uh, distributed systems where the storage is critical and this also needs to be tested and inverter efficiency as i said this inverter itself can pump a lot of power quality issues into your grid. And that's why output of an uh, inverter needs to be tested for power quality online as well as in the, in the facilities where it is manufactured. Okay, And the power quality in every level uh, after this inverter, definitely you need to verify. And there are many other tests which I have not included here, but why I put some of these things here? This is actually a new test introduced in this. And more importantly, now you can see the DC buses used in the uh, solar inverters are going upwards in the voltage levels. DC buses are now up to 1,500 volt or even more. Okay, Many of the test instruments are uh, not capable of handling above 1,000 volt. And that is where you also need to find test instruments for higher voltage levels. And when it comes to wind, it is almost similar, but less complex in terms of uh, the system configuration. But here the challenges are different. You have to ensure that the, the low voltage right through kind of uh, conditions because when you have the wind turbines, it is entirely dependent on the wind. And if the wind is not proper or wind is uh, absolutely there is no wind or if, if the wind is uh, uh, varying and how this voltage conditions of uh, the uh, wind turbines are actually 
coming and how this is actually impacting the 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 grid because it is again connected to the grid okay and how this low voltage uh, output of the wind turbines are affecting the uh, grid there you also may have to uh, introduce this low voltage right through kind of uh, terms and you may have to monitor that similarly the flickering effects of this in wind uh, turbines you may find more of a flicker because of its own nature of uh, uh, generation and uh, voltage variations are always a big thing in uh, wind generators and again the connection is same as i said earlier the solar inverters similarly you are also getting the uh, generation here and again uh, <coughs> machine side converters and grid side converters there are two kind of converters usually in uh, in winter uh, wind generation and this actually connected to your grid all these facilities you need to have all kind of testing in this also vibration becomes a kind of critical testing because it's a kind of rotating device that's why this vibration or the alignment of the uh, so these uh, wind turbines are very very critical to ensure the best output from the invert the uh, wind turbines or wind mills and then comes the grid connected evs okay here i have taken these components to arrive at what is changing in india especially and world over also here if you look at the ev ev we are in a beginning stage but i am i i am sure that in another 5 years india will have the amount of uh, ev and ev infrastructure which is capable to handle at least at least the uh, the highest population which is demanding for that kind of things okay and here you can see uh, every charger because we talk about the charging stations because this is a kind of critical uh, system uh, to be installed in every places and this can be a huge power supplies okay it can be in kilowatts in 150 or 250 or 500 kind of kilowatt kind of range and these are actually connected through a uh, ev sorry solar uh, systems or directly to the grid okay and you are getting the grid or you are also having your own systems and again you are connecting this to a uh, electric vehicle and you may have the passengers inside here you also get the additional requirement of safety testing requirement for the vehicle especially and electrical safety can be a threat to the electric vehicle and its occupants if you are not maintaining the electrical safety of every component plus the earthing of the system the solar uh, sorry the uh, ev charging stations and in this what are the testing we can do there are many things because when it comes to ev you have to do uh, test the uh, power trains you have to test every component what you are using you have to do the testing of uh, battery and battery management systems then electrical safety of the vehicle then you also need to test the individual components and the conversions converters and inverters used in the charging systems and communication protocols because here when you are using this uh, uh, evcs with the uh, ev the ev and evcs communicates through some uh, protocols and that protocol testing also is very very important okay similarly pq and pq is very very critical in the uh, grid connected evs and here is what you also find supra harmonics supra harmonics is the harmonics beyond that 9 hertz uh, range that is 2 kilohertz to 150 kilohertz of a frequency you can expect from the new generation power electronic devices and what people have seen in, in there is a study happened in germany on the supra harmonics and evs and all what they have realized that okay there is a high amount of uh, high frequency harmonics that is termed as the high frequency harmonics because uh, that component is increasing wherever they have this kind of ev and uh, the solar systems in in interconnected way and this is actually going to even uh, create problems in india because we are in a spree of uh, installing everything and over a period of time we will find more and more problems uh, occurring in our our systems then the interference yeah this is what I, I told interference between the ev and solar inverters this can create even noise pollution when you have there is another study in the in the germany i have read uh, where is a uh, there is a big charging station because of the noise generated by the charging chargers and the evs 
or during the charging uh, happening multiple cars charging at one time even loud audible noise is getting produced and there are buildings near to it cannot open their windows that is a kind of studies are coming out okay that's why you have to have you have to prepare yourself for all kind of challenges like this and this also in many uh, developed countries there are uh, grid codes are redefined to accommodate this kind of challenges like uh, microgrids especially in europe and uh, in malaysia also there are uh, some uh, developments are happening even i have seen in australia they are also changing their grid codes to accommodate all these things and in india we are still in a very beginning stage and we are still talking only about ieee 519 and ieee 519 2014 is a better thing and it is still to come in implementation in indian uh, utility sector i think there is a uh, amendment or a act is under the parliament's uh, uh, consideration for more than a year and once that comes at least we will have some relief but still that uh, uh, amendment is not considered the new generation uh, challenges like microgrids and other things hopefully we will have more advanced precautions and grid codes coming in the way and here why it is more important microgrids like solar uh, plants are low impedance sources and this can actually interfere with the source of source come load for pq in smart grids that is this uh, sources are actually not only source it can also become a load at times okay that is where you will have a challenge and switching frequency of pv inverters can add supra harmonics that is the the switching frequency of inverters nowadays it is going beyond uh, the imaginations now i think it will be in kilohertzs pq means it is actually the power quality uh, it is uh, basically the power quality is what i am talking that's why the power quality is very very critical parameter needs to be monitored in any kind of uh, smart grid or smart systems i have taken a study conducted and published by uh, india smart grid forum uh, this is available in open domain in their website you can see this is a power quality study done in bangalore for uh, some of the uh, ev charging stations where they have already established okay you can see the kind of ev uh, load 44 kilowatt load under voltage uh, incidents occurred 26 times and overload uh, occurred 345 locations 341 locations current harmonics was always observed and then cable fault was observed okay this is all done after the installations and there are recommendation they have done see uh, there are institutes can definitely do a lot of uh, uh, innovative things and going in advance uh, and then studying these kind of conditions and analyzing what is the kind of changes happening in this kind of uh, uh, systems that is in solar systems or a wind systems what is the kind of new parameters are getting introduced what is the kind of failures are seen all those things are unfortunately we don't have that kind of uh, study happening in india hopefully some of the institutions will come soon and then do those kind of things and then help the future customers this is only to give you an understanding how this power quality system is changing when you are introducing new components when it comes to the testing i have told many testing requirements how flu can help there this is where we can give the products we have the complete range of power quality analyzers and which can give the quantitative and qualitative parameters in detail and we have launched our latest power quality analyzer uh, the uh, 1770 series which can give uh, power quality parameters as per the iec 61000-4-30 edition 3 and it is built on a platform which can upgrade to the edition 4 capabilities also in the future once the edition 4 comes and this is the first power quality analyzer available in india for uh, some extent of supra harmonics measurement this can give you supra harmonics or the high frequency harmonics up to 30 kilohertz in this system and all other parameters and the reporting based on the iec ieee 519 2014 because ieee 519 2014 specifies the power quality parameters at the pcc level and also talks about the power quality to be the power quality is a responsibility of uh, the utility as well as 
the customer that's that means the IEEE 519 is actually putting the uh, honors of maintaining the power quality to equally to both the par, uh, parties that is uh, the supplier and the uh, consumer okay similarly we also have a power analyzer which can be used to test your power electronic systems like inverters converters power supplies all those things where your switching frequency is very high wide bandwidth power analysis is required when you have the high frequency switching then you and you also may have a uh, complex waveform in the output of the uh, systems like inverters and converters where you will have a pwm output or a kind of a, a modulator output those kind of waveforms you need to have a wide bandwidth accurate power analyzers we have the complete range of power analyzers for such applications this is the uh, wide bandwidth power analyzer but we made a wide bandwidth power analyzer for uh, for field use okay you can use a laboratory accuracy power analyzer with wider bandwidth that is 500 kilohertz, uh, kilohertz of uh, bandwidth and this can be this is a battery operated one it can be used in the field also for performance verifications okay and this also has the capability of measuring up to 1500 volt when you have the inverters and all using the dc buses up to 1500 volt this product can meet those challenges okay and this is where the, then when you have these ev chargers then you also need to verify each of those components and converter uh, of this product using a wide bandwidth power analyzer to ensure that you are not polluting the system or you are not pumping anything wrong data into the uh, the ev that is even the dc charging output it must be of very less of a ripple or a kind of even the charging and discharging time or the uh, the rise time and fall time of the dc must be tested for uh, the chargers there are many things which which you can if you want to talk about ev alone and testing i can i think i can talk about an hour or a plus for that then comes here it's a product which is a very uh, interesting product what we have launched field, field sense uh, clamp on meter this meter can measure both voltage and current without a test lead and this can also measure three phase uh, conditions at three phase voltages uh, by connecting this can communicate to your uh, smartphone and can instantly give you the three phase voltage line to line voltages using this okay and this also has a capability to find out what is the kind of THD levels in your uh, facility. That is whether the uh, system has a poor power quality or a better power quality or a uh, good power quality. That will give an indication. It's a kind of stethoscope for the electricians or the electrical engineers to find my PQ conditions are good or bad. Then comes the, the world's first uh, category three rated 1500 volt true RMS multi, uh, clam meter. This is our uh, uh multimeter for the <coughs> solar industry or the the clam meter for the solar industry it, which can take up to 1500 volt uh, dc and a category 3 rated up to 1500 volt that means it is it is the most safest uh, clam meter available currently for solar application and it also comes with dc power measurement audio polarity and very various other things okay it can also connect an external uh, clamp that is a flexible CT to measure up to 2500 volt uh, ampere uh, of AC. Finally, this is the uh, acoustic imager. You can see in the in the screen, you can see the uh, the partial discharge are detected using this. Okay, how easy it is when when it comes to very high voltage, you can't go nearby. Okay, that's why this camera can detect this kind of partial discharges uh, even a distance of 70 or 100 meters away. Okay, similarly. It can detect any kind of leakages, especially when I said earlier, when you have this wind uh, uh, blade manufacturing, you have the vacuum uh, filled inside that uh, blade uh, plates. And if there's a leakage, it will be inefficient in working. That's why you need to test that 40 meter long uh, plates using a uh, leak detection technique. And they were using soap water and other things. And this can give a lot of saving that i think three days of saving as in a minimum range they will be able to save and then do the testing very easily and we also have sold this product for uh, ev battery testing application where the batteries are actually a big concern today and you would have seen a lot of uh, accidents happening and there 
uh, it is basically because of the lithium is a highly inflammable uh, chemical and it can actually create fire accidents if there is a kind of uh, hole in the complete package and if the dust and uh, uh, air even oxygen goes inside the uh, the package and to test these packages people use the low pressure and then some kind of mechanism to find whether there is a bulging or a leaking happening and that is where we can really help people to identify there is a leak or not on where exactly it is leaking that's why people are choosing this kind of uh, acoustic images for even new generation testing applications and this is my final summary uh, slide we have solutions for predictive maintenance we have solutions for electrical safety we have uh, solutions for process calibration and efficiency we have solutions for energy efficiency and saving that is energy audit and then energy saving kind of uh, application then we also have solutions for the research and development for any new technology applications especially the the early detection the the importance of uh, measurement is uh, when you can measure you can control when you can measure you can redesign or when you can measure you can get the confidence that's why what we are into is we are in the business of giving confidence through the reliable and dependable measuring devices and we will be happy to support you all on that journey thanks a lot for listening i don't know whether i have uh, overshoot some time yes i think around 13 minutes i overshoot sorry for that uh, no i will open for uh, questions so bakran thank you very much thank for the, for uh, elaborating the different aspects of power quality and it was nice to see a clamp meter which can measure current as well as the voltage so one of the advanced product i guess and now i would request participants to please uh, unmute themselves introduce themselves and ask the question so shankara gomati please unmute yourself and ask directly or right shankara gomati yeah, are you yeah. there yeah. yeah i am there sir actually my question is uh, I, I mean, for for smart smart grid application, you are using a yeah. rather than grid, you are using a smart grid distribution of the uh, old power. Okay. Uh, okay. In in that case, if it is a linear, it will not be an issue. But if it uh, goes like uh, like a harmonic or interest or a non very long very non non linear, then what about the end user result? will it not I, degrade the end user like definitely see uh, whether it is uh, a smart grid or uh, the usual grid that is the general grid uh, the condition will degrade if you are using non linear loads okay because today i think uh, 80% or 85% of the loads are all uh, non linear or maybe 90 percentage okay and uh, that's why you will not find linear loads anymore even if you find linear loads like motors and uh, uh, the leds and all may be linear in nature but uh, sorry not leds the motors and the inductors and capacitors purely it is linear but what we are doing is we are attaching a kind of uh, power electronics before it like a bft or a kind of a controller or a kind of a power supply and that will actually make the system as a non linear and the moment you have non linear system it will make uh inferior quality power at the customer is that uh, answering your question or uh, yeah you are um, answering uh, yeah. technically but the thing is what i am thinking is in yeah. that case the cost involved in my uh, generation or yeah. implementation will it be yeah. getting affected no definitely definitely the cost see the moment you have uh, the power quality is bad you may have to implement a kind of correction system okay you may have that, to that corrective or... system has been done in fluke sir no we don't have the uh, corrective system we don't make a kind of uh, filters or a kind of uh, active uh, correctors and all we don't make but we can suggest some of the things there are many many players into that 
there are do you, and do you yeah. have any kind of a project to do that uh, so that interested people to do that so that you can depute some kind of an r&d development uh, case yeah it's a good question but uh, personally i may, i would have been uh, happy to accept that but uh, the issue is uh, fluke as a company is mainly into t and m test and measurement okay, okay. after measurement we don't take it okay that's why the what we are talking is the correction it is the after measurement what is the correction ac action you need to do that is where you you are talking about the yeah in, in case product. in that case you can monopoly the product that not, not like that there are there are some good good players international players mm. are already there i have seen in one of the uh, seminars in the 2020 there is a french or german company has actually launched a kind of uh, a, a new technology solution for correcting the power quality and uh, i know another uh, i think it's a french company another company which is already present in india which is selling uh, the power quality solutions uh, the correctors and then the filters and other things they are reasonably good and similarly i know even abb and snyder into into this power quality and correction kind of uh, things Okay, okay, that's why you have uh, a number of people. But yes, I am not telling that there, that is the end of it. Okay, there can be many many people sitting here. Uh, you you may be doing some research, or your students may be doing research, or your companies may be doing research. You may come out with something uh, out of the box solutions, and the solution okay. currently available is not the the perfect. I would say. Okay, I I then I'll ask about technically one one more question, sir. Last question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the case of a wireless manet that is a mobile ad hoc network yeah yeah i am operating in a terrain location okay in that terrain location i want the unit my laptop or this uh, the device which i am carrying should withstand with large amount of power for the longer period okay for that what kind yeah. of uh, equipment will suit appropriately No, you you want uh, your laptop to last for long time. That's yeah, why, that's because I want to make a war and wa work in the war environment and communicate okay. my communic uh, information to yeah. all the ten people around me, so yeah. that my lifetime device lifetime should be high enough long. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, if you if you look at I have I have seen once the uh, the ISRO launch pad. and okay. isro uh, launch is a kind of uh, uh, we we have supplied some of the power quality analysis for the uh, rocket launch uh, 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 this thing in itr also okay itr uh, control room is actually completely uh, on the backup power okay and they continuously monitor monitor the power quality using some high end power quality analyzers okay the option what you have is either to go for uh, a dc backup because most of the communication network today they use dc backup straight away not the upss okay dc backup because if you are using a dc operatable system then it is better to go for dc so that you you can be more reliable in that okay yes sir i have start. a dc with the required yeah. uh, limit okay yeah. the device yeah. with uh, which can handle but i yeah. can't up charge charge and uh, do any kind of an operation in a terrain environment no there is but, no charging uh, yeah. unit yeah that that is that is a they, kind they of they they only want to work that is why i set war dialing see there i don't think there is any, any direct answer for me because uh, mm -hmm. you you may have to find some uh, solution because i have seen this okay. kind of equipment coming but uh, in such a terrain where you you don't have any other option maybe you have to mm. depend on some uh, some makeshift arrangements of uh, some portable solar mechanism or something where as long as you are there you can you can work and again in those kind of terrain whether the availability of sun also you may have to consider okay <laughs> that's another no another sir i am yeah. i am working on yeah. that area for giving yeah. a product to the people that yeah. is why i am an academician only Okay, that's that's I'm fine. I'm giving a solution for the particular agencies like DRDO and so on, so on. Very good, fantastic. Because that's you, what, that's what I'm Eric, asking. You my, have, you, um, you already, similarly, you already I'm using a wireless solution. sensor network also. 
fantastic same okay. thing i am using manet mobile dock as well as yeah. sensor network very good okay you are from uh, where ma'am i am academician sir phd in no. mobile and wireless network okay from which institute uh, actually i completed in anna university chennai okay i have got 22 years of experience i got a drdiva project also oh fantastic okay in in between i lost that one and i am yeah. again reinitiating their people are calling to work on Very that nice. now it's yeah. the right time to definitely solution see i am not i am uh, i am very happy to hear that from uh, a person like you because there is uh, unlimited possibilities it is all depends on how you see the challenge yeah okay. that is why i am uh, i am yes. thinking about any kind of a power saving or with the with the help of a dc is available with you or not that no, way i look into your pro, your thoughts yeah. yeah i got it ma'am uh, mm. currently we don't have that kind of solutions uh, okay uh, there can be some some solutions in that range because everyone is now uh, concerned about this uh, longevity of uh, dc uh, applications especially even vehicle applications also people wanted that long long term uh, uh, mileage right or uh, sorry long long term usage okay how how far mm-hmm. he can go okay that is what actually you are talking maybe we will have some material material itself is getting developed okay because the uh, lithium ion may have some kind of uh, uh, problems it may not be able to store that kind of power you may find end up uh, designing a new battery itself which can hold the charge for longer hours okay it it it's, it's uh, endless possibilities are there i think there can be many things coming up yes yes sir this you can make it as a better solution because nidhi ayog has planned by 2030 everything should be e vehicle yeah that uh, hopefully we will be there but uh, anyway this it's not uh, uh, i don't know it is it's a kind of very ambitious one because uh, if we get midway we will i, I my my feel is that we are going in a very fast track without considering what is the problems maybe in the midway we will face some challenges and then we may have to uh, take a diversion and that's why yes, I yes sir yes sir i'll catch you with okay. your mail id sir uh, others will be waiting for their question okay that's can that's i really can mean. i catch you through mail if no i problem. have any doubt no problem mm. no problem okay thank you thank Whatever you sir. i can help i will be happy to do yeah thank you very much sir thank you thank you madam so anybody uh, any other participants any further questions please any questions from ashwathi amrutha divya lal geeta juhi neeraj any questions rajesh no sir so no one has any question hello yes hello madam i am rajesh devnar yes oh, rajesh okay. can you be a little louder can you be a little louder actually i am speaking my, my i think my mic is some issue so can you uh, may i audible yes now you are audible yes uh, actually i am a research scholar i am working on power quality related to ev so my question is uh, to sir uh, which fluke power quality analyzer would be suitable for my research work in power quality analysis for ev electric vehicle uh electric vehicle uh, as a individual entity you are talking or you are talking about the grid connected uh, ev yeah, yeah grid connected ev grid, grid connected EV. yeah i would i would suggest the uh, fluke uh, 17 uh, 75 fluke 17 75 which meets uh, the latest requirements and which also gives you an indication on the uh, supra harmonics up to 30 kilohertz uh, uh, high frequency harmonics it will be able to show you and it's very easy to use sir can you mention its cost uh cost will be uh, anyway i think uh, i can ask my commercial team to get in touch with you if you can send me a message or something you are ba- basically from where 
I am from Bangalore. NIT Agartala. Agartala, okay. I will ask my Calcutta team to get in touch with you, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, okay. is there any provision for uh, connecting with MATLAB simulating software? Yes. Because we also provide uh, this with uh, uh, PQDA uh, uh, form of data and uh, that can be uh, interfaced with any of your software even if you are writing a software you will be able to take the data and then uh, use it okay sir okay sir thank you rajesh so any participants any further questions so mr prabhakaran's email id is visible to all of you if you have any further question you can directly email him and he would be happy to answer your queries. Yeah. And thank you. And so any any further question, if there is no further questions, we are going to wrap up our session today. And uh, before uh, we end up, you know, I would like to sh tell you that the next next week uh, we will be coming up with with uh, a you see, uh, one second. Yeah. So next week, same time, we will be having Dr. Rishi Gupta, application scientist in Anton Parr. He'll be talking about zeta potential and particle size measurement using the light scattering and laser diffraction techniques. So participants who are interested may join next week, same time. Now we are done with today's lecture, question answer, and we are now closing, concluding the session. Thank you, Prabhagar, once, once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we are closing the session now. Thank you. Yeah.